There we go. Good afternoon, councillors, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the planning committee of the 21st of February 2022. Uh, we're first of all going to receive apologies, which we have quite a few. We've got Councillor Hanson, Councillor Buswell, Councillor Hampton, Councillor Branston, and we think we may have apologies from Councillor Light, but she may be here later, so we'll, we'll put them on the side just on there. Okay, first item on the agenda, or second item on the agenda, is to approve the sign the minutes of the meeting held on the 15th of November. You've got copies of those in your agenda pack. Is everybody happy that those are an accurate representation? Oh, Councillor Sutton. No, no, no. You're on green. I thought you were going to put right or something. Right. In that case, uh, all those in favour of approving the minutes? Thank you very much. Uh, item three on the agenda is de declarations of interest. Uh, you're reminded that you need to declare any pecuniary interest before the beginning of a, an item. Uh, I'm not aware that we have any interest tonight at the moment though. Item 4 is the Local Government Access to Information Act and Exclusion of the Press. Again, we have no items in Part 2, so all of the meeting will be in Part 1. So that brings us on to part, uh, Item 5, which is an A application, 191709, full land at Court Pitot, uh, the junction of Benny Bridge. Over to the officers, please. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, members. This application before you this evening is at the land of Pembroke Court off Pinho Road in Baybridge. The applicant is Mr. Matthias Daly of Lidl, Great Britain Limited, and the proposal is to construct a Class EA food store, formerly Class A1, with associated parking, landscaping, and access works. First slide for you is the site location plan on the OS map. The next slide shows the aerial view. It's going to be seen the site to the north of Pinho Road and has been cleared of any buildings. This is a Google Street View taken in the summer last year. Members have been passed this way recently, they'll be quite familiar. Um, the site has a hoarding around it, uh, and you can just about uh, see piles of earth behind it. These are some uh, site photos. As you can see, there's not a lot to see on the site at the moment post demolition. Just showing the uh, local plan first review proposals map. This indicates the site when it used to have various employment buildings on it, which have been demolished. Uh, in terms of any allocations or designations, this site is what we call white lands. There are no uh, policy designations affecting it within the local plan first review. Uh, members will be aware from the committee report that um, policy CP2 in the core strategy is uh, partly relevant. This protects existing employment areas, including the existing employment area at Pin Ho. And this image shows you the map taken from the Exeter Employment Land Review 2009, which is part of the evidence base for the core strategy, indicating the area of that employment area at Pin Ho. There are a few constraints affecting the site. Uh, the Pembroke Road Recycling Centre is just to the northwest of this site, and therefore the top corner of the site is just within the waste consultation zone, which meant we had to consult Devon County Council as the waste planning authority. And according to our GIS system EMAP, it, due to the previous industrial uses, the land is likely to be contaminated, which has been confirmed from the uh, applicants' uh, investigations and the documents submitted with the application. This site uh, shows the flood risk issues with the site. The top left image is flood zone two. That shows most of the site uh, being affected. The map below that is flood zone 3 where there is a greater than 1 in 100 risk of annual river flooding. 
That affects a slightly smaller area around the north and eastern edge of the site. The bottom right image also shows that the site is susceptible to surface water flooding. The reason for the risk of flooding is from the Pin Brook, which is a narrow uh, channel of water which runs adjacent to the north boundary, as can be seen in the two photographs in the top right corner. Pinbrook is a tributary of the River X. So the proposal overview is stated is to construct a new food store, associated parking and landscaping, gross external area of 1,997 square meters with a gross internal area of 1,900 square meters. This means that the proposal falls below the national threshold for requiring a retail impact assessment in accordance with the MPPF. The car park will have 104 parking spaces, which will include seven disabled spaces and two electric vehicle charging spaces. Vehicle access will remain off Benny Bridge, where it is currently accessed from. There will be a new pedestrian cycle access off Pinho Road next to the store entrance. There will be changes to the Pinho Road and Benny Bridge junction by making it signalised. And two can crossings, which are crossings designed for pedestrians and cy cyclists, will be installed across Pinho Road and Benny Bridge at the junction. Staff and customer cycle parking will be provided, as you will see from the additional update sheet. Bose Condition 18 requires additional parking for cargo bikes and a facility for electric bikes. Soft landscaping will be added around the edge of the site and in accordance with Bose Condition 13, this will require tree planting as part of the soft landscape works. This is the proposed site plan. The store is to the west of the site partly in the area that is Flood Zone 1, whereas the northern part of it will be in Flood Zone 2 and Flood Zone 3. Car park to the east. This is the proposed floor plan, typical uh, floor plan for a food store such as this, by the retail, retailer Lidl. This is the roof plan showing PV panels on the roof, These are the elevations. Uh, initially, the uh, design of the building included uh, white cladding, but following comments from the council's previous placemaking officer, this was changed to uh, red brick slip cladding uh, and blue brick cladding for the plinth of the building in order to fit into the local character, better, character of the area better. This is the indicative landscaping plan showing a strip of landscaping front of the, the entrance, sorry, the front of the store which faces onto Pinho Road. This is the detailed access drawing. Um, as members will know from reading the committee report, most of the objections received for the application, uh, the issues raised related to concerns about access particularly due to the uh, busyness of this junction. Uh, this is why the application has taken so long to process. Uh, and as mentioned earlier, uh, following discussions with Devon County Councillors, the local highway authority, the decision has been made to make this a signalised junction with two crossings, which will make it safer for all users, so that's vehicle users as well as cyclists and pedestrians. Uh, the effect of this, though, will be to uh, slow the traffic, and by 2024, in the PM peak hour, so basically between 5 p.m. and 6 p.m., uh, it is uh, estimated that the Pinho Road in both directions will be over capacity by about 10%. However, the local highway authority has concluded that this will not be a severe effect, which would normally necessitate refusal. Effectively, they're saying just because car drivers need to wait a few more minutes if they're going from A to B along Pinho Road, that isn't a severe impact. 
certainly when balanced against the improvements to the junction in terms of the safety for car users exiting Venny Bridge, getting on to Pinhoe Road, as well as of course cyclists and pedestrians at the junction. This map is taken from the applicant's transport assessment just to highlight that it is a fairly sustainable site in terms of accessibility by non-car modes. The blue dot indicates Pinho Railway Station, which is actually within 800 metres, which is indicative of a 10 minute walking distance, which is generally regarded as a sustainable walking distance. And there are a number of bus stops which are indicated by the red dots within a five minute walking distance. In addition, the strategic cycle route E4 runs directly adjacent to the site along Pinho Road. Members will see from the committee report that there's been reference to the Moore Exchange site, both in terms of the retail sequential test and the flood risk sequential test. The conclusion is because Moore Exchange isn't designated a centre or is not within the designated centre, the site passes the sequential test. However, because Moore Exchange isn't at risk of flooding and is considered to be within the same catchment area as this proposal for this site by officers, the site fails the flood risk sequential test. As members will see from the report, officers consider there are material considerations that outweigh this. Namely, the site is a brownfield site and the council's policies and the MPPF strongly encourage the redevelopment of brownfield sites and the site is considered sustainable because it is within walking distance of sustainable transport modes and as highlighted on this plan which has been produced by officers it will be within walking distance of uh, quite a high number of existing and new dwellings that are currently being built. Effectively, within 800 metres, that's a 10 metre walking distance, this will cover the north-western part of the Markton Hill Barton strategic allocation, whereas more exchange will cover the southern part. So just moving to the conclusion, the development is not considered to conflict with the policies of the development plan and would be sustainable development in the opinion of officers. This is largely due to the fact that the site is located within walking cycle distance of a large number of new and existing dwellings, some of which are still under construction, as I just mentioned. And the planned improvements to the Pinho Road Venny Bridge Junction, making it signalised incorporating two crossings, which will make the junction safer for all users despite a predicted impact on traffic flows along Pinho Road and the PMP car in 2024. This will prioritise pedestrian cycle movement over vehicles. This will support the Council's ambition of the city becoming net zero carbon in eight years by 2030. In addition, the proposal will bring a vacant brownfield site back into use and generate up to 40 permanent jobs. As mentioned, the proposal passes the main town centre use of sequential test, fails the flood risk sequential test, but this is considered to be outweighed by the sustainable benefits, which are considered to carry significant weight in the overall planning balance. So the recommendation of your officers is to grant the planning permission with the conditions set out on the additional information update sheet. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matt. Um, do we have any questions for Matt? Okay, Councillor Mitchell. Thank you, Matt. Could you give some clarification on the highway issue? Uh, clearly, having lights and pedestrian crossings at the junction by the store is going to improve the situation there. But if you move back the road where you say traffic is going to increase, you've got a situation where if you're coming up to the Sainsbury's roundabout, you hit traffic lights. You then go on 50 yards and you hit another set of traffic lights feed into the other supermarket, you're now going to hit these new traffic lights for this supermarket and then 20, 30 yards later on you've got traffic lights for Cumberland Way. Uh, and I just wonder how's the Highway Authority taken that into account, the flow of traffic, the 
confusion or the issues that can arise between four or five sets of traffic lights within such a short distance. We're very lucky to have the head of highways and have County Council with us. Brian, would you like to answer that for me? <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Chair, sorry. Um, yeah, yes, um, we, uh, short answer is yes, we have taken it into account. It was a site that, um, as, as Matt explained, um, it's taken a long time to get to what we now consider to be an acceptable solution. Um, we looked at a number of that, uh, access opportunities, including retaining the existing priority arrangement, but that, that just couldn't be made to work safely. So um, the applicants and their transport consultants came up with what you see before you now. Um, it, it's been through a few iterations to get to this stage. Um, we have taken into account the interaction with the, uh, with the other signals. It does um, increase journey time slightly for those choosing to use uh, motorised transport, but for pedestrians and cyclists, and indeed all road users, we think it will be considerably safer. Any other questions? Councillor Moore, then Councillor Sutton, and then Councillor Williams. Thank you very much. Um, questions to the County Council, please. Um, about the um, impact from this development and the cumulative impact um, of this in the context of other developments on air quality, please. Matt? Yeah. Or you, Brian, whoever, Matt, think of me. Yeah, an air, an air quality impact assessment has been produced. Um, they had to produce a number of versions to account for the changing uh, highways solutions being presented. So the, the latest was submitted in December to account for the new signalised junction being proposed. That concludes that there will be uh, a significant increase in traffic queuing on the very so short stretch of Venny Bridge between the entrance to the site and that junction, but there won't be uh, an issue because there are basically no adjoining residential properties that that would affect. Um, you might have a situation when the store is busy where you'd have uh, cars queuing within the car park, uh, and the applicants did consider the impact of that on the residential properties adjoining the supermarket to the northeast, but because of the distance of the actual houses from the car park, it was considered there wouldn't be any harm. Basically, pollution dissipates very quickly from the source due to the wind and so on and so forth. So our environmental health uh, team have concluded that the uh, application is acceptable in terms of air quality impacts. Thank you, Chair, and taking advantage of the fact that um, a colleague from uh, Highways of Devon County Council. Um, in terms of the access and the crossings, are both of those crossings ones where um, it's basically an all-stop junction, so there's a point at which um, people can get across the full width of the road and it's not sort of get halfway and then wait for another set of lights? And does that apply to both of the crossings, the one across Pinhoe Road and across the, the access into Penny Bridges. Thank you. Again, the short answer is yes. Um, that was part of the discussions that we had with the uh, with the applicants. There's still maybe probably at design stage some fine tuning to do to the junction arrangement, but it's been designed so that it is one full cross movement. You don't have to sort of stop on the and queue on the island in the middle. And Councillor Williams. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. Um, this is a question for um, Matt. On page 20, uh, sorry, page 57 in uh, section 3 on parking, the penultimate paragraph, um, that's where it, it sets out uh, the um, uh, spaces for uh, cycle parking. And I think it says that um, in the sustainable transport um, SPD, you've got SAP cycle spaces of four and minimum customer spaces required is ten but overall they're proposing um, six plus six and then we've got the condition that because the condition 18 doesn't specify numbers I think that I, I'm just wondering whether we should actually specify numbers there because you've got cycle parking for cargo bikes but we don't say how many well as normal bikes and facility for electric bikes and I just feel that 
we've pointed out that we haven't got enough, but we've not actually specified exactly how many of what and how many um, more than the current 12 um, that could be um, put in place. I think it's one for members. If members want to specify numbers, that's a decision for you you can make. But ultimately, we're saying that the proposed type of parking isn't up to scratch in terms of our sustainable transport SPD. That's why we're adding this condition requiring the details, and it requires that extra cycle parking as well. Um, you know, if it's not going to meet the minimum requirements of the SPD, the condition ain't going to be approved. So. You know, you can trust your officers to get it right, which I hope you do. Um, obviously, though, if members want to add actual figures, that's, that's one for you to decide. I don't think it's necessary, but obviously I'll say that because I've read the condition. No, thank you. That was just to so clarify the process. I wasn't quite clear about that. I do trust you. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you, Councillor Williams. Thank you, uh, uh, Matt. Uh, next, we have uh, councillors speaking under standing order number 44. Councillor Woods, that's you. Uh, you know the ropes, you've been here before, you can speak for as long as you like, but don't feel the urge to fill the time. You can speak for as long as I like, but don't push it. Yeah, fair enough. Um, like a lot of uh, local councillors, I pride myself on my knowledge of the ward I represent, um, and so can speak at these. Uh, these occasions with a good degree of certainty. In this particular case, I live in Venny Bridge, so I know it really well. On the way to this meeting, I had quite a bit of time sat at that junction to consider what I was going to say. Um, so I, I am talking from an informed basis, but what I'm going to say now is not as a resident of Venny Bridge. It's based on the feedback, the 71 objections that went in, and feedback I've had on the doorstep as I've done uh, canvassing through, through the period and most specifically um, the last couple of weeks where I've been able to talk to residents who are close to this proposal um, and have seen the amended plans because I think that's quite important. So a lot of work gone into it um, since it was first submitted. So the first thing I'd like to do I think is to thank the officers of both council for two years of work to get us to this stage. I think this has been quite a, a grueling journey for, uh, for some of them. Um, and I think I'd like also like to, to recognise that given the significant increase in population in place and on its way in Pinho, that a new grocery, out, grocery outlet is welcomed. It's a good thing. Also, the junction, as has been described, is not a very safe junction, as I found out tonight. You've kind of got to time it right. You don't want to take chances, but if you think about it for too long, you're going to have to wait for the load of traffic that the cars have loaded behind the traffic lights and you'll be there another two or three or four or five minutes so it's not a great junction and i've seen a lot of people take chances on it so an improvement to that junction is a good thing a new grocery outlet is a good thing however the location itself in regard to groceries a new grocery outlet is not great it's pretty poor it concentrates all the grocery outlets for uh, for Pinho, within a few hundred uh, within a few hundred yards of each other, we've got Sainsbury's, we've got Aldi's, and we've got Lidl's, and that is the main grocery um, provisioning for the ward. Um, is that the one with the? Could you bring up the um, sustainable walking circle that you put up earlier? That's possible. That's it. Yeah, on, on this particular one, we're talking about the travel, the sustainable travel distance to the site. That, that logic is already in play for two superstores. So that, that logic of that versus more exchange is slightly flawed because that site is already heavily provided with outlets. The rest of the new developments aren't. Also, the uh, left-hand side of that circle if you want to get to that site, you're going to have to come over Chancel Lane Bridge. For anybody that knows the board, Chancel Lane Bridge is a steep humpback bridge managed by, or owned by the, by the railways. The side barriers are down. They've been knocked down by traffic. They've stayed down. It's a blind bridge. As you're coming up to it, you can see what's on the other side. And right at the top is um, 
brick walls which are very, very thin, and pedestrians and cars have very near misses there on a very regular basis. So if you want to walk from that, that left-hand side of that circle, you are going to uh, have an interesting journey. The other thing that was mentioned was bus stops, um, and those bus stops are, that's quite correct, they do, uh, are in vicinity to that site, but those buses go to uh, the one and the two, I think go to uh, Columpton and on to Tiverton. There are some other local um, uh, buses that go down into the town, but for most of the new development, there is no bus route to this site. I mean, we all know that buses are a bit of a challenge at the moment, um, but that particular, those bus stops don't really serve Pin Hub. So whilst it's, it's presented as a, as a logic for sustainable sustainability of the site, actually, those bus stops don't represent that. So, I think one of the things that we need to be aware of is the spread of residential area is to the east and to the south. And when you look at Moorgate, that is closer to it. And we've already well supplied in that particular area. Uh, the other thing uh, is the, the junction itself and the flooding are, are the main issues that I'm hearing about on the doorstep. Within the uh, papers, it uh, recognises that the job proposed junction will be 10% over capacity in the afternoons. Um, and I know we live in an age of compromise, but if you're going to design something and you know that it's going to go beyond capacity, surely you haven't designed it correctly. Is that just my full logic? The other thing, they, um, there were a number of times where um, objections were explored, but where kind of it's okay because on balance, but if you, if you apply that to an argument often enough, then on balance, it isn't right. If you let them off because of this and you let them off because of that, Flooding was an example, you know, on balance, probably it's okay. The junction, 10% over capacity, but probably on balance, it was okay. Um, Moorgate, uh, the Moorgate uh, shop, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, the, the, you know, you can reach this, this side better, so on balance, probably that's okay. Uh, so a fair bit of that at play. So, um, also welcome the grocery. Uh, store, and I think it's important that, that uh, we get one, a new one to fit to feed, uh, to supply the new population, and an improvement to the junction is brilliant. I think this particular um, look, this particular site is not good, and the location in terms of trying to serve the population is not good either. Um, so those are those are the issues I have, and obviously. Um, it's very difficult to balance these these different and and that is the, the hard task that you and the weight you bear as a committee is to try and balance all these issues um, and the only thing i would leave leave with i think is for the officers that um if there is an application that comes in for this duration like two years and the substantial changes in the plans as a, as a result of negotiation was it's not a requirement under planning law to go back out to public consultation. By the end, from where we started to where we've ended up, it almost feels like a new consultation. And a lot of the 71 ob objections may have had other things to say about it if they've been if there had been a re-consultation. Re so I'm just putting that out. But if it takes two years and there's significant plans changes, maybe there's room for a new public consultation. Just a thought. Thank you. Thank you, Duncan. Does anyone have any questions for Councillor Wood? Oh, for Councillor Moore, then Councillor Wood. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wood. Um, so we've heard about the issue of air quality. That is not deemed to be significant because there'll be no residents living along the road en route to the supermarket. What's your view on that? Sorry, could you repeat the question? So we've been told um, that the impact of the transport of car journeys to the supermarket in relation to air pollution won't be significant because residents don't live along the road um, en route to a supermarket. So what's your view on that? Do you think air pollution will be, um, become a problem? I, th I think um, one of the most significant things I've spotted around the air pollution 
false positives in the cities when they're on a on a hill, and you've got to accelerate to get get out of that to get on the hill. There's no hill here, but what we do have is a lot of stationary cars, and it's only the more modern ones that are in the cars that are not So there's a lot of cars sat there running their engines, uh, and the uh, already that that happens a lot because the the there is, it's very difficult to get through that junction specifically to get out of it. Um, and I think, I haven't, I haven't mentioned this before, but I think if you improve this junction, there is a second thing that, that comes into play, that as an improved junction, if you do live in the upper part, it's kind of difficult to get to the M5 unless you go further out and down Churchill. I think if you improve the junction, there will be more traffic coming over Chancellor and Bridge. So there will be more traffic, I think, arriving at that junction than may have been foreseen because of the natural, the hard to predict way that people will be at to rat runs and, and alternative routes. So I think there will be a lot of traffic at standstill with the uh, uh, sequencing of traffic lights. You'll have kind of packages of cars getting moved forward if you can it and stopping and idling again. So in terms of air pollution, I think it's not going to move, uh, it's not going to move things forward. Thank you, Councillor Wood. Um, I appreciate your views on air pollution. I, however, will bow to the experts on it, but I do agree with the fact that the cars don't move much at the moment. There's some news out there myself. Uh, Councillor Williams. Uh, thank you. you. You partially answered my question. It was about um, your comment about some uh, increased traffic over Chancel Bridge. I didn't quite understand the logic of, of that since I assume that people from the north, uh, north of that bridge will be maybe going to Sainsbury's or the other um, uh, to Aldi's at the moment and I didn't quite understand why there would be more traffic just because you've got a little, um, which is going to be slightly nearer. Because where do they, where do the people north of Chelsea Bridge currently go to get their groceries? But anyway, you partially, you might want to add to your answer. Okay, um, it's not the addition of a superstore, um, so they're not they're not coming specially for little. So although there will be a little bit of that that goes on because it, it does have its own uh, following as a store, the, the, the it's a it's a bizarre thing to put it in. There's an improvement to the junction, and currently those that would normally take a route for whatever reason. Um, would like to take the route over Chancellor Lane Bridge. When they arrive at Venny Bridge, you can't get out into the main road. Eventually, they learn that's not a good idea, and they take a different route. If you improve that junction, those that would naturally take that, that short, shorter route will. So I think there will be an unforeseen rat run type impact for the, as a result of the improved junction. Someone who already uses that rat run. I don't know if they really do go the other way. <laughs> Councillor by Alex. Thank you. Um, <coughs> Councillor, whereas I don't want to get into a debate with you, uh, you've, um, you listened to what the officer had to say and what was done, and I may end up sharing some of your opinions. Have you got any technical data, any technical evidence that you can point me to to substantiate that? Because as you know, making a decision Opinion is one thing, but I will need factual data if I'm to basis as to listen to what you say. Have you got any technical data I can look at? No, unfortunately, I don't have the resources of, of Liddles or, or um, the expertise of the officers. So it's simply the lived experience of um, you know resident in Pinhoe, uh, but specifically one in Venue Bridge in this occasion. Um, so. Yeah, it's, it's um, not technical, it's just lived experience, and I take your point, the officers um, are uh, brought in for their expertise. Now, I'm going to, because of something you raised at the end of your statement, I am going to ask Matt about the advertising of the application and what advertising took place, just to clear that up for me, please. Yeah, sure, uh, Chair. Uh, yeah, we recognise that the application was in a long time. When um, revised plans were submitted in the summer of 20, 
2020 and then later in 2021 we carried out a full reconsultation so effectively we treated it as if it was a, a new application on both those occasions so that would have involved um, advertising in the paper um, putting on our weekly list on our website um, new site notices um, but it also goes further than if it was a new application because our system will automatically um, reconsult everyone who objected so not only the original people that we wrote to who lived sort of in the nearby area but anyone else who had objected first time round would have got a letter again um, so yeah we, we recognize the application was in longer than we um, would have liked but we we do feel we've dealt with the publicity aspects appropriately thank you for clarifying that for me Matt. Um, if I could call forward, uh, I've got your name here, Victoria George Taylor speaking in favour of the application. You only get three minutes, I'm afraid, and we'll give you a shout when that time's up. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Victoria and I'm speaking on behalf of Little. The application will provide a new signal instruction at Benny Bridge and Pinho Road. This will address the existing safety issues for all users and mitigate against the impacts of the development. Crucially, the junction prioritises pedestrian and cycle movements over vehicle movements, providing the two new Toucan crossings already discussed. The application will bring back into use a vacant brownfield site which will have owned for two years. This site should be prioritised for redevelopment in accordance with your own planning policies and as well as the MPPF. This should be given great weight in your decision making this evening. If approved, the new store will create 40 jobs at the site, little starting hourly wet pay is currently 60p above the real living wage, rising to £1.50 above the living wage for longer standing employees. The store will be within walking distance of new housing to the south of Pinho Road, as well as to existing residential areas, offering genuine opportunities for sustainable travel. Other available sites for retail development already mentioned don't offer this same benefit to us. Though the application fails the flooding sequential test, in actual fact it will provide betterment in comparison, in comparison to the site as previously developed, which was all laid to hard sanding and provided no attenuation for surface water. The proposed scheme includes suds to manage the surface water runoff, reducing the risk of flooding on the site and downstream. There is therefore no negative impact from the development. The design of the store has been amended to push the building back into the site to respect the existing building line on Pinho Road and to include brick elevations in line with the local vernacular. To come back on a point made by Councillor Woods, Respectfully, I don't believe that a concentration of retail units in a particular area could be a robust reason for refusal for this application. I'd also add, whereas there is a conflict between policies, as there is in this case, officers are required to make a judgment on balance, and they have done so suitably in this case. You may have noticed from the officer's report that a number of our competitors have shown significant interest in this application. Because of this and the number of judicial review applications that are seen from competitors elsewhere, the officer's report has been checked by Little's external legal team and they are happy that the report and the recommendation made is robust and defendable to third party challenge in all regards. In summary, the proposal has been recommended for approval by officers after thorough examination as an application that has received no objection from any statutory consultee and I therefore sincerely hope you feel able to support your officer's recommendation and approve this proposal. I welcome any questions, but ease our highways consultant who's designed the junction is here tonight and we'll be able to answer any questions if permitted. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Councillor Mitchell? Thank you. Uh, we've so far concentrated on traffic in regards of uh, um, people going to the store to use it, uh, cars, etc. We haven't yet discussed anything about your goods vehicle delivery system. And I'm just concerned that if traffic is coming off the M5, coming up Cumberland Way, how will they access the site? Um, and will it cause a traffic issue? And also, how do you intend your goods vehicles to enter and exit the site? Goods vehicles are coming through the pin, new Pinho Road junction. Um, it's been fully tracked for HGV. It's a smaller size HGV than we normally use. Um, and the tracking exercise has been accepted by the highways officers as safe. So j just to reinforce that, you were saying that the delivery vehicles to this site will be smaller than some of the very large ones we see yes. delivered at others. And I'm just worried about the crossing width of the road and the, is, the turning is, there if they're coming down from Cumberland Way to turn across two lanes of traffic. I think 
that there's no problem with the manoeuvring on the highway. We're using a smaller delivery bit because of the manoeuvring within the site. Right. Victoria's <laughs> 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 yeah. right. The smaller vehicle is primarily from where the vehicle exits the legal site on the Bench Bridge. So we have traffic for the largest vehicle that's legally permitted. It, that vehicle can so get that junction. We need to ensure that because of the adjacent um, industrial developments and units that they do have artisans to get out of the site. The single junction allows them to do that. The servicing of the store. Slightly smaller vehicle that went exiting onto Bennett Bridge to stop at the stop line. The new signals, the length of the article was be too long, and potentially the back end of the train going back out, traffic coming into Bennett Bridge, hence the slightly smaller vehicle, traffic with hard reason people are moving. Are we correct in thinking there's only little owned vehicles that will be delivering to the site, not other distributors? Correct. Only our own delivery vehicles attend the site. They also take away waste. There are no separate waste um, visits to the site. Thank you. Councillor Sutton. Thank you. Um, thank you. Those are helpful answers. Um, can you just reassure me, in the light of what Councillor Wood was saying about the, um, the Chancel Lane Bridge, that um, your drivers will understand and won't be attempting to, to get over Chancel Lane Bridge accessing the sites. I can reassure you and, and if necessary we'd be happy to agree to a delivery management plan if you decide it's necessary. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar but our distribution centre is um, just outside Exeter and the only logical group would be the one by the main road. Thank you and, and really um, if I can kind of uh, indulge your patience chair um can we also make sure that the um during the construction phase um that that is also made clear as well because from personal experience in my own ward um you can agree um with developers that about times of deliveries and size of vehicles but it needs to be robustly enforced as well otherwise you do find um drivers who appear either not to have been given the instruction or not to have um, taken on board the instruction, um, you know, will, it, will attempt ridiculous um, journeys, uh, which they shouldn't be doing. Thank you. I'm sure Councillor Wood and I have seen many an articulated or even regret their decision to try and come, go across uh, Chancel Lane in the past. Yeah. But it used to have a freezer store at break. Thank you very much for your time. I'd like to, oh, hello, Councillor Moore's got a hand up, sorry. Thank you, I've got a couple of questions if that's right. Um, thank you for answering the point about um, flooding because I was going to ask you that, so you've saved a, saved a question there, thank you very much. Um, just, just I might as well follow through on the air pollution because I've asked it before. Um, your technical report just um, seemed to, and I could be wrong in understanding this, but it seemed to just base it on the data provided by the council from the air quality monitoring sites and not take account of the cumulative impact set up by the National Policy Planning Framework. So did you did you do a study of the cumulative impact of the other developments and this site? Forgive me, I'm not an air quality um, assessor myself. Um, as I understand it, the store is close to the air quality management area but not within one and therefore that wouldn't be required. Matt, would you be able to offer any thoughts on Sorry, just trotting down the condition asked for Councillor Sutton. Question on air quality. Yeah, so there was a question on air quality. You, you want to ask it again? Yeah, the question was about the air quality report. It just seemed to refer to the council's monitoring points, which either side of the development, and not consider the national planning policy framework um, matter around cumulative impact on, um, in relation to air quality. So that's what I was concerned about because there's like the other developments, there's this development. So I'm just wanting to, and in the question I've had, the response I had back from the environmental um, health team was traffic will just be on the network anyway. So it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me what is being said. The site isn't in the air quality management area for a start, but there are issues of um, air quality 
going above the national levels. Um, so, so the air, the air pollutant that um, we're talking about is nitrogen dioxide, which is um, the main pollutant caused by vehicles. Um, the um, I mean, the um, air quality is, is strongly linked to traffic flows, so the um, transport assessment would have taken into account the cumulative traffic impacts. So the data that the air quality assessment is based on is based on the transport assessment, which itself takes into account the cumulative impacts of other development. So I can't give you a precise answer because I'm not. And either a highways expert or air quality expert, but um, obviously the highway authority have concluded it's acceptable in terms of transport impacts, um, <coughs> except for the going 10% over in 2024, and our environmental health officer who I think wrote the council's air quality um, strategy, she's satisfied. Um, unfortunately, she's not here tonight because she would be able to give you a much better answer. But, um, we're not concerned as officers about the impacts of air quality. Brian, do you have a bit more to add to that? Chair Chairman, just a, a reasonably general comment, I guess. Um, new houses generate additional traffic. Supermark new supermarkets generally don't. It's a bit of a generalisation, but what new supermarkets do is generally slightly redistribute existing traffic because the, the demand is generated by houses, but supermarkets themselves don't actually generate much additional traffic. Um, so the change that you'll see here is, there will be some additional attraction, obviously, but um, also the, uh, the, the signal junction is, is contributing slightly. But um, yeah, that was just, it was just to make that point, really, that to be. Thank you for that, Brian. Okay. Thank you very much, Councillor. Um, I've got a, I agree with Councillor Williams' points about um, cycling, and obviously that will encourage more sustainable transport. Um, and this is, seems like a piece of detail, but it's really, really important. Um, at other little stores, you've got recycling stands, which you put your front wheel into, and it tends to end up not being used because they're not very good. Can you confirm you're going to put Sheffield stands in the upside down U-shaped ones? And would you be able to comment on Councillor Williams' um, comments about the number of um, regular cycle stands for people who might travel for shopping and working? Thank you. Yes, there will be Sheffield stands. Um, and officers will also ask us to look at space for cargo bikes alongside that. Um, sorry, what was the second part of your question? Confirming the number. Oh, confirming the number. Um, we will look at it. We've got at the moment it's um, six Sheffield stands providing space for 12 bicycles, six for staff, six for um, visitors. But if, as part of the condition, we're required to provide more, we'll be happy to do so. And the condition we had were reassured that we would look into that matter for us to ensure we get a decent amount. Thank you very much for your time. So I think that's everybody. And now I'd like to open this item for debate. Thank you. Someone's got to start, haven't they? Um, yes, uh, thank you. It's um, it, it's interesting, um, this development, isn't it? Because uh, it, it has been employment land and it has been semi derelict employment land for, for some considerable time, which I think um, is reflective of the housing developments in that area, um, which, which are many and significant, and the, the changing. Um, employment units in terms of small industrial units, kind of factories, uh, those kind of things. It, it's, they're, they're moving out of fashion, if you like, for, for being close to residential areas. So I, I think there's an inevitability that an application coming forward would be some manner of retail. Um, and also listening to what the officers and, and the applicants and the council would have said, Clearly, a lot of discussion has gone on on this application, not least around the, the transport, and, and it's not very often that I use that 
um, junction, but, but I can imagine that it has been an absolute nightmare and, and getting worse over the years um, with the additional traffic coming forward. Um, and I, I do welcome the fact that it's now going to be a signal junction and uh, that there is going to be consideration given to prioritising uh, pedestrians and cyclists trying to cross those those roads, those roads whether or not they're they're, they're going to to uh, to visit this store um, or some other reason. I mean, they may well be um, kind of making their way up to exhibition fields or um, other parts of Pinho. I think on balance, um, I'm, I'm inclined to um, support this because I think from what I've heard and from the, the helpful questions that have come forward, a lot of the challenges and um, difficulties have actually been addressed during, during the process. Um, and listening to uh, listening to the applicant um, you know I love the fact that, um, that they are um, going to to listen to that further discussions around the number of bikes um, I, I suspect uh, councillor Moore will say and I would agree with her that I don't think 12 um, cycle parking places is sufficient um, particularly if you're expecting half a dozen of them to be used by um, staff at the store, um, I, I, would, I would suggest that you probably need at least double um, that number. Um, and again, given the the number of houses and, and the the walking area, kind of looking at that, there are walking and cycling routes for those people who are fit and healthy enough to walk to um, get some of their shopping. Um, that aren't unpleasant walking routes, you know, down through exhibition fields, um, you know. And, and also a, a kind of a crossways, if you get what I mean, from um, um, from more um, from Monkerton towards uh, towards there. I mean, you know, it wouldn't be an unpleasant walk of an evening to um, to go and get a bit of, of extra shopping. So I think the more that we can do um, to to um, to facilitate that and save people who maybe want to to ride their bikes as well. Um, yeah, uh, there, there are always going to be people, people living in, in proximity to somewhere that's a site that hasn't been used um, who won't like a new use. Generally speaking, people don't like change. They get used to what's there and when it changes, um, they, they don't like it. Um, but I think it's it's going to be a use of addition and, and I'm minded to support it. Thank you. Interesting. I remember when I was about 19 years of age when uh, Sainsbury's first came to Pinhoe and what a shock that was to the local area. Um, interesting development. This uh, seems to support green transport, brings jobs, um, it's close to the local population. I recall several planning meetings ago we, we were talking about the Hillbottom developments and the, the lack of retail space was uh, bought up. So maybe this makes so of it. Personally, uh, you know, I grew up in Pinhoe, family in Pinhoe. I'm one of those people that often shop at Christmas time in two or three supermarkets, often on the same day. So actually, a little next to an Audi, uh, next to a Sainsbury's, isn't actually a bad thing. I'm sure other people do that as well. In fact, I believe lots of companies, Starbucks in America, for example, were often positioned for four uh, coffee shops uh, on the four corners of a junction in order to maximise their revenue. Um, the traffic lights may discourage movements across the bridge at Chancellor Lane. Um, who knows? Um, I'm not sure it's possible to get a large HTV at that, at, over that bridge, but yeah, broadly I think I'm in favour of this. Um, yeah, it's been a long time. I think it would be good to have. Thank you. Anybody else? If not, I'm happy to take it to the vote. Would anybody like to recommend a recommendation? Uh, that's Councillor Sutton and someone second it. Councillor Denham, thank you very much. And all those in favour? It's unanimous, Thank you very much, everybody. We'll move on to item six with the list of decisions made and withdrawn. I would say to consider a report of Deputy Chief Executive, but I guess that's Barry you today. Sorry. Honestly, you two. Right. The list of decisions made and withdrawn applications. 
got a union. Yes. The members just asked to note those um, Thank you very much. decisions made. Thank you. And uh, item seven, which is the appeals report, and to, again, to consider the report from Deputy Committee. Has everyone had a good look? It's a good appeals report this time. It's well worth reading if you've not read it. I'm sure you all have because you're very good at doing your own work. But if you haven't, really do have a read because there's some really big applications in there and lots of different uh, outcomes that are worth having a look at. Uh, and that brings us to the. Oh, oh Councillor Sutton. Yes, really on, on the appeals report. Um, Yes, I mean, you're right, it's detailed and it's interesting, and, and the first one is uh, as interesting and, and not in a good way um, from, I think, both this committee's point of view and certainly as a ward councillor personal. Um, you know, it's deeply disappointing because we, we gave this a lot of time and a lot of energy, um, and then for an inspector to kind of come in and, and overturn it is... Um, is irksome, shall we <laughs> say. I'm just kind of having a, a minor rant, Chair, but uh, I understand the process and I, I, I kind of, but I am very disappointed that, uh, that this application, this appeal has, has been allowed. Thank you. I think we can probably all agree with you on that, Councillor Sutton. Councillor Mitchell. I concur with Councillor Sutton's view. The Exwick uh, decision, I think, is a dangerous precedent for the city values that we as a planning committee wish to see in our planning process, whereas Pennsylvania wanted this to be welcomed. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> you win some, you lose some, but sadly uh, we want to win them all, and we should win them. We should, we should I think we can more. safely say, say as we move through the local plan process, hopefully that will be a change, a shift in uh, how those outcomes will come. Uh, the final item on the agenda is item 8, which is the inspection party, which will be on Tuesday the 15th of March at 9.30. Councillors stand to attend are Councillor Martin, Mitchells and Moore. Um, I understand that Councillor Martin is unlikely to be able to attend, but Councillor Williams and I said we are happy to fill that gap if need. Thank you very much for your time. It's been a lovely meeting. Thank you to everyone who's come. Good night.